The Gracale may not look quite like the Maserati you always promised yourself, but this mid-sized performance SUV is the most accessible model yet from this classic Italian brand. There are four-cylinder and pure electric options, as well as a classic roaring V6, and enough overtaking presence to scare dawdling Porsche Macans. Maserati's taken its time in reinventing its product range, but things are at last beginning to take shape. We've had hybrid engines, the gorgeous MC20 supercar, and now, most significantly of all, this, the Grecale. It's named after a Mediterranean wind, and it's the company's long-awaited mid-sized Porsche Macan baiting SUV. Yes, launched at a time when Macan combustion model production is in its final couple of years. But never mind, better late than never. It'll certainly do more for Maserati's bottom line than the brand's larger Levante SUV, which isn't quite large enough to be large or quite small enough to be small. Maserati purists will possibly be horrified to learn that this Gricali has been engineered for both four-cylinder petrol and full electric power, but mollified by the availability of a top Trofeo model with a throbbing Netuno V6 borrowed from the MC20. We had to wait a bit for this car, finally launched in 2022 after delays due to Covid and the subsequent semiconductor shortage. But is it all too little too late? Or the start of a fresh, profitable era for this enduring Italian brand, founded by Alfiera Maserati in Bologna way back in 1913, but now headquartered in Modena and owned by a Stellantis Group conglomerate that tolerates classic badges only when they make money. Maserati hasn't been very good at that for most of its existence, but if any car can turn that round, it's one tapping into two of the industry's most trending genres, electrification and premium SUVs. But could you, should you, ignore more established segment contenders and follow your heart to this Maserati? Well, don't decide until you've seen the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test. So what's it like? Well, press the starter and you're greeted with a gratifyingly emotive soundtrack, or at least you will be in the V6-powered flagship model we're trying here. So let's see what this car has to offer. Most potential Gricale customers will cast a longing look at this exorbitantly priced V6 variant before settling on one of the more accessible four-cylinder versions, which both use an engine you might never have expected to see in a Maserati, a two-litre unit embellished with mild hybrid 48-volt tech and delivering 300 horsepower to all four wheels in the base GT form we're trying here, or 325 horsepower in the mid-range Medina model. We've already seen this engine in the brand's larger Levante SUV, and it's basically the same GME T4 unit also found in the Alfa Romeo Stelvio that also donates its Giorgio platform to this car. In this Gricali, that unit offers plenty of poke. Even this entry-level GT variant manages the rest to 62 mile an hour sprint in just 5.6 seconds, despite this Maserati's portly 1,870 kilogram curb weight. You'll need to be quick with the ZF 8-speed auto transmission's gorgeous long silver paddle shifters to achieve that. But the feeling of swapping cogs, Marinello style, is one that rarely gets old. If sense, budget, fears of exorbitant running costs or the thought of potential interrogation from your other half limit you to choosing that four-cylinder power plant in this car, you might want to think twice about finding the significant premium Maserati wants for the mid-range Modena variant because its 450 newton metre torque figure is no different to the GT 
and it gets to 62 miles an hour and inconsequential 0.3 seconds faster. Either way, you'll want the drive experience to be a little orally different to what's served up by more familiar brands in this segment, particularly as for not much more money, you could have got yourself a Porsche Macan with two more cylinders underneath the bonnet. Sure enough, the exhaust of this two litre unit sounds a little fruity, particularly after you've given it a bit of a boot to get going and got the e-booster electric turbocharger spinning through the mid-range. You'd not mistake this for a traditional high revving Italian engine though, and there's little incentive to thrash it up to the red line. Still, the eight-speed auto transmission responds with smoothness and alacrity, regardless of your choice between the various driving modes on offer, comfort, GT and sport. Plus, there's an off-road setting, which you'll probably never use, but which, if you did in a Gracali fitted with air suspension, would raise ride height by 30 millimetres. You'd expect the steering to be quite sensitive in a Maserati, but actually it's quite well weighted for the kind of car this is. Ride quality is another nice surprise, even on the standard coil springs, provided you avoid the largest 21 inch wheel size. It gets even better if you pay for the brand's Skyhook adaptive damping setup, or even better for the company's air suspension system. Traction through the turns is impressive, thanks not only to the all-wheel drive system, but also to an incorporated Maserati-developed vehicle dynamic control module setup, derived from a system originally developed for the brand's MC20 supercar. A bit like the conductor of an orchestra, this predictively controls and coordinates every aspect of the Grigale's drive dynamics, pitch, traction, acceleration, stability, and so on, ensuring that everything's instantly aligned, reducing intervention times and improving performance. Despite all of this, the Grigale never feels as agile and chuckable as its most obvious arch rival, Porsche's Macan, which you might be expecting given Maserati's positioning as a more GT orientated mark. Still, it's a performance orientated brand, something the company hopes to underline by providing a whole range of selectable virtually presented technical gauges on the center stack screen, covering turbo boost, torque, oil pressure, oil temperature, transmission temperature, and battery voltage. There's additionally a Drive Mode Explorer screen showing with a kind of cobweb graphic how efficiency, responsiveness, ride stiffness, electronic control and acceleration vary through the different drive modes. There's a torque management screen showing how traction's being transmitted to the tarmac in real time. And you can also select a drag race screen that allows you to time acceleration runs. None of this is going to be of that much interest to customers who select the four-cylinder version of this model, but these features might well excite those inclined to find the vast budget necessary to spoil themselves with a rather more charismatic-sounding Gricale, the V6-powered Trofeo variant. Given the shared platform and engineering of the four-cylinder version with Alfa Romeo's Stelvio, you might quite logically expect the engine fitted to that Trofeo model to be the same Ferrari fettled V6 found in a Stelvio Quadrifoglio, but no. Instead, the Grecalio Trofeo goes its own way and uses a slightly detuned 523 brake horsepower wet sump version of the throbbing 3 litre Nettuno V6 found in the aforementioned MC20 supercar. As there, the brand's F1-inspired MTC, or Maserati Twin Combustion Technology features, which uses a clever pre-chamber system that optimises performance through a software setup that always chooses the most suitable combustion mode. In V6 form, the Gricale is quite glorious to listen to, snarling angrily from its quad exit exhausts and sprinting to 62 miles an hour in just 3.8 seconds, which sounds and is extremely quick, but it's no faster than you'd go in the rival Stelvio Quadrifoglio model that rolls down the same production line, shares the same transmission, and would save you around £20,000. 
In a Trofeo though, the engine note is a touch meaner and more intense, especially after selection of the top sport or track orientated Corsa drive modes, the latter setting exclusive to this V6 variant. Try the top Gricale version back to back with this four cylinder model and through the twisty stuff you'll really notice the extra 187 kilos it carries over this lesser variant. Still, it's respectably agile for a 1.67 meter tall SUV weighing over two tons. This kind of prodigious power is undeniably intoxicating. For the Trofeo, Maserati worked a little harder on steering feel, which is quick and a little more sensitive, though interestingly, not as much as in a Stelvio. As you'd hope from this top variant's lottery level price tag, the adaptive air springs are standard at this end of the range. And V6 customers get a different level of stopping power too, courtesy of vast cross-drilled brake discs clamped by huge calipers, all the kind of stuff that will appeal to traditional Maserati fans. But to Prosper, the brand has also to appeal to non-traditional customers, hence the pure electric Gricale Folgore model. You can talk to your dealer about Folgore being the Italian for Thunderbolt. It doesn't have the frantically fast tri-motor setup used by the company's Gran Turismo Folgore Sports Coupe. Instead, there's a dual motor system which offers 550 brake horsepower. To give you some perspective, that power output is 27 horsepower less than you get in a Kia EV6 GT. But it's 63 horsepower more than is offered by the Ford Mustang Mach-E GT. And in this Maserati, it's accompanied by 820 newton meters of torque, which means that 62 miles an hour from rest is just 4.1 seconds away en route to a top speed that's a very un-EV like 124 miles an hour. A big 105 kilowatt hour battery offers a 250 mile driving range. It's hard to imagine why this crossover design, not the Levante, wasn't first to market in establishing Maserati as a performance SUV manufacturer. At over 4.8 metres in length, the Gricale isn't actually all that much smaller than the Levante. Specifically, it's only 158 millimetres shorter. Stylized touches include this trident embossed trapezoidal C-pillar and the usual Maserati trio of air vents in the front wings. There are roof rails and to suit the trend of the car's fashionable segment, the requisite big wheel rims can be specified. The alloys have a Trident inspired design, range in size from 19 inches all the way up to 21 and can be specified with different coloured calipers if you don't want the grey ones fitted here. Overall, this car certainly looks little larger than its arch rival, the Porsche Macan. But you might not think its profile to be particularly distinctive as an SUV or more importantly, as a Maserati. So it's just as well that at the front, all this famous brand's usual cues are in place, including that trademark toothy front grille bearing the Mark's iconic Trident badge originally devised by founder Alfieri Maserati's younger brother, Mario, after seeing the Fontana di Nettuno, the fountain of Neptune, in the center of the family's hometown of Bologna. This grille has chrome plated lines with the base GT or black finishing with the mid-level Medina version or this top Trofeo. The rear is rather less distinctive, though Maserati insists that these flush fitted LED tail lights bisected by this central trim strip are a nod to the old boomerang style lights of their old Guigiero styled 3200 GT sports car. A subtle roof spoiler and a potent lower diffuser section with twin exhausts, each side add finishing touches. Brand loyalists will use this rear perspective to tell the various Gricale models apart. The mid-range Medina and the top Trofeo version feature rear wheels pushed 34 millimeters further apart and get a restyled bumper too, all of which makes the car look a touch more planted. On all Gricales, under the skin sits the Giorgio platform used by this Maserati's cousin, the Alfa Romeo Stelvio, though that chassis has been extended by 50 millimeters here. 
So, a relatively subtle exterior, but you'd hope to be rather more wowed by what lies within. The flush exterior door handles hide touch-sensitive buttons for access. And once inside, you'll find yourself in a luxury cabin dripping with trademark Italian style and a driving position that manages to be focused yet commanding with a T-shaped dash design meant to reference classic Maseratis like the Ghibli from the 70s. Not all the switchgear quality emulates the standard set by current German rivals, but it's a cut above what you get in an Alfa Stelvio and there's lashings of stitched leather which can be accompanied by extended quilted leather on the dash and grained inlays on the doors. What looks like Maserati's traditional center dash clock is retained at the top of the center stack, but closer inspection reveals that though it's still analog in layout, the interface, a little disappointingly, is now digital. Still, that does mean the provision of an eye-like interface that can switch between different displays, including a compass, a G-meter reading, and a readout that, rather pointlessly, shows you brake or accelerator inputs. If you're thinking of switching to this car as a refreshing alternative to a German rival, you might, understandably, be a little worried about how this car might have been screwed together. Well, Grecali manufacturing takes place alongside Alfa Romeo SUVs in the brand's Italian Casino factory, which reminds you that with previous generation Maseratis, build quality was a bit of a lottery. You never quite knew what you were going to get. But the company's new owner, Stellantis, controls that plant these days and has invested heavily to the tune of 800 million euros to try and elevate build quality to German standards which broadly seems to be reflected in what's served up here. There's certainly plenty of the required tech, starting with the 12.3-inch digital instrument screen you view through the thick-rimmed three-spoke wheel, which, just like the MC20 supercar, has gorgeous long silver paddle shifters and alpha-like circular satellite controllers hanging from its centre spokes. The right one controls the drive modes, while the left one is the starter button. The virtual instrument panel can display in three formats, classic, evolved and relaxed, and has a lot of information to impart with speed on the right and revs on the left. In the centre, below a digital speedo, is a configurable centre section on which you can prioritise speed or add things like trip data, drive assist info and optional sat-nav mapping. The rev counter on the left also has a configurable centre section which can show audio selection, a G-force reading, a compass, outside temperature, consumption, an odometer, tyre pressures and a charge and boost meter. If you'd prefer to keep your eyes glued to the rapidly receding tarmac scrolling out above this binnacle, you can add an optional head-up display which is a first for Maserati. Two more screens dominate the centre stack separated by the transmission buttons that Maserati's long preferred to an auto gear stick. We're not sure that this lower 8.8 inch monitor offers any advantages over more tactile, easier to use toggle switch gear. It mainly deals with climate functions and less wisely with the headlights. Much more can be found on the 12.3 inch infotainment screen further up, which has crisp graphics with quick responses and incorporates a voice control system responding to commands prefaced with Hey Maserati. Some of its on-screen virtual keys are a little small though, including those on the left-hand frame, which provide shortcut access to media functions, navigation mapping, phone, vehicle functions and apps. All the features you'd expect to find come fitted, including Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring, Amazon Alexa compatibility, and over-the-air updates. And there's the expensive option of adding the thumping 1,285 watt 21 speaker Sonus Faber premium surround audio system with its stylized speakers. We've been trying that here. Enough on screens, back to that Latin ambience. And as we've already suggested, the main touch points here all feel suitably premium. The thick leather steering wheel, the double saddle style dashboard stitching, the cool metal paddle shifters, the quality of the leather upholstery and so on. But there are a few exceptions. The cabin's chrome effect trim is very obviously plastic. The steering wheel switch gear feels cheap, 
and these plastic gear selection buttons feel more Fiat than Ferrari. Those touch-sensitive outside door switches allow for the fitment of small release buttons on the interior door trims, though the minimalist chic this design feature is presumably intended to provide is somewhat diminished by the need to provide conventional door handles further down to avoid you getting trapped in the car if the power goes off. What else? Well, the seats have plenty of adjustment and support. As for cabin practicalities, well, the absence of an auto gear shifter frees up space on the transmission tunnel for a covered butterfly-lidded cubby with USB-A and USB-C ports, a padded armrest and big cup holders. Unforgivably, the phone charger that also resides here usually costs extra. The glove box, which incorporates a 12-volt socket, is big, but the door bins aren't. Time to take a look in the rear. Now, if your Gracali has air suspension fitted, then when it's parked, the ride height will automatically be lowered to make it easier to get in. And once inside, well, thanks to the fairly generous 2,901 millimeter wheelbase length, there's more space back here than you'd get in a Stelvio or a Macan, mainly because the cabin's a little wider than with those two cars, but there's still only room enough for a couple of adults to be comfortable in the back. Three would need to be on quite personable terms, the middle occupant impeded by this high central transmission tunnel and a raised seat cushion that restricts the otherwise quite acceptable level of headroom. It's disappointing that the seat base doesn't slide as it would in a segment rival like Audi's Q5. We'd hope that the back rest might recline, but that's not possible either. There are the usual practical features, reasonable door bins, grab handles, overhead reading lights, USB A and C ports and seat back pockets. A separate rear seat tri-zone climate control panel, the kind of thing you get as standard on a Golf these days, is an expensive option. And if there are only two of you, you'll be able to utilise this central armrest with its cup holders. Out back, the powered tailgate rises to reveal a decently sized boot, 535 litres in this 2 litre model and in the Folgore EV and a larger 570 litres in the top Trofeo because it doesn't have to package in the 48 volt mild hybrid system. That's better than a rival Macan, 500 litres, and pretty close to what you get from the brand's larger Levante SUV, despite this Grigale being lower, narrower and 160 millimetres shorter. There's an elastic strap on the left, four silver tie downs, bag hooks on both sides, a 12 volt socket on the left and useful lights in the inner side of the tailgate that shine down into the cargo area. Eight carry-on cases will fit and there's more room beneath the cargo area floor which can be optionally fitted out with rails. If you need more room, you'll be pleased to find that the rear seat backrest has a convenient 40-20-40 split. So long items like skis can be slid in between two rear seated folk. If everything needs to be folded, then activate these side wall catches or pull the provided latches in the seat bases and you'll find that the backrests fit flat into the floor. As we filmed in autumn 2023, Maserati was talking of pricing from around £64,000 for the entry level 300 horsepower GT four cylinder variant we're trying here. We can see that tempting quite a few buyers in the mid sized luxury SUV sector. Maserati thinks a very large proportion of sales will be of the four cylinder model in mid range 330 horsepower Medina spec, which, as we filmed, was pitched from around £71,000. These figures pitch mainstream Gricale models right into the upper end of the BMW X3, Mercedes GLC or Porsche Macan segment and it's certainly a more exclusive choice than any of those SUVs as it needs to be for the prices being asked. Certainly those figures are quite ambitious if your point of comparison is the most obvious arch rival here, Porsche's Macan. In base two litre four cylinder form, that Porsche priced from just over £53,000 as we filmed, but has quite a lot less power 
in its two base guises, 265 PS. However, it won't go unnoticed by many potential Gricale customers that it's possible to get a six-cylinder Macan S with 380 PS for around £4,000 less than the base four-cylinder Gricale GT model we're trying here. And for much the same price as the mid-range two-litre Modena spec Gricale, Porsche can sell you a six-cylinder Macan GTS with 440 PS, vastly more power. Food for thought. At the top of the range, the top 530 horsepower Gricale V6 Trofeo is targeting a much more affluent kind of customer, given an asking price which, as we compiled this test, was pitched right up at around £102,500. That figure might just about seem reasonable if the class alternative you're considering is a Mercedes AMG GLC 63. It won't if you're looking at similarly performing but less exclusive feeling rivals like BMW's X3 M Competition or Alfa Romeo's Stelvio Quadrifoglio. Either way, you've really got to want that top V6 Maserati's extra performance. All Gricali models get four-wheel drive with a ZF 8-speed torque converter automatic gearbox plus LED headlamps with auto high beam. Beyond that, let's look at standard equipment, starting with this GT spec. Here, the front seats get 10-way power adjustment with memory settings and the standard leather upholstery will be coloured either marrone, a kind of brown, or a much darker Nero shade, which can be had with or without Grigio stitching. You'll be offered five different interior trim choices too. The screen tech you'd want is standard across the range, 12.3 inch displays for the instrument binnacle and the center screen. The latter featuring navigation, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring and over the air updates. Plus, there's a further lower 8.8-inch monitor for the climate controls. Also included is a power-adjustable steering column, a rear-view camera, all-round parking sensors and an alarm. Plus, there are some lovely cabin touches, like the way that the digital central analogue clock can also function as a chronometer or a G-meter. There's also the usual remote access via a Maserati Connect system, accessible via a smartphone app. All that comes with this base GT trim. If you stretch to the mid-range Modena version, the entry model's 19-inch gloss black Thetis rims are swapped for larger 20-inch Etere alloys. And the cabin features extended leather trim, open pore Radica wood inlays, and the option of Rosso Red leather upholstery. The top Trofeo model gets 21-inch cryo matte aluminium design rims, though at extra cost you can swap these for 21-inch Pegaso rims in gloss black. Either way, red brake calipers feature. And at this level in the range you get air suspension, active dampers and an electronic limited slip differential as standard. The Folgari EV version gets its own unique Econil upholstery produced from recycled fishing nets and featuring a unique laser cut design apparently inspired by the elegant moves of a ballerina. The Gricale Folgari can be had with unique copper coloured special paintwork known as Reim Folgari. Obviously, you'll be able to spend big on the options list, whichever Gricale model you choose. With the four-cylinder models, you should consider the £1,400 edition of air suspension. Plus, you might also want adaptive full LED matrix headlamps and luxury items like a panoramic twin pane glass roof, a surround view camera, ambient lighting, rear privacy glass, a heated steering wheel and more adjustable 12 or 14 way powered front seats. Many customers will also want to consider finding £2,200 more for the optional 1,285 watt 21 speaker Sonus Faber premium surround audio system upgrade which claims to offer a 360 degree music experience. We've been trying that here. What about optional packs? Well, keen drivers should add the Sport Design Pack 
which adds a limited slip differential for extra cornering traction. Skyhook adaptive suspension, brushed stainless steel sport pedals and black anodized exhaust tips. There's a tech assistance pack that gives you a head up display, an infrared protection windscreen and the wireless phone charger that rather meanly Maserati doesn't include as standard. Luxury focused Gricale customers may want to add the optional climate comfort package which gives you cooled ventilation, a heated steering wheel, heated rear seats, a three zone climate control system with a 6.5 inch rear touchscreen for back seat folk and a kick sensor for the powered tailgate. You can also add trident stitched headrests for the front seats to that pack. As for aesthetics, well, there are various 20 inch wheel choices for the two litre models. And with all rims, you can add black, red or yellow calipers. As for paintwork, well, there's a choice of four standard metallic colours. But if you've more to spend, then your dealer will direct you to some more exclusive Fura Siri colour options. For the cabin, if you avoid base spec, you'll get a piano black trimming option or the choice of some expensive carbon fibre interior finishes. And across the range, practical extras include laminated glass, auto dimming exterior mirrors, roof rails, a trailer tow hitch and a roof box lift and load system. And there's an optional travel pack which gives you cargo floor rails, an aluminium cargo sill and a 115 volt boot power socket. Safety wise, Maserati claims that its level two advanced driving assistance systems offer the highest level of driving automation support available on the market. But upon inspection of the fine print, it turns out that most of it requires extra spend for the kind of features which by and large, you'd normally expect might be standard on a luxury SUV of this price. There's a choice of level one and level two extra cost ADAS packages to bring this car's camera safety provision up to scratch. Level one gives you adaptive cruise control, a blind spot monitor, active lane management, drowsy driver detection, and navigation on the instrument screen. The pricier level two package adds traffic sign recognition, intersection collision assist, and active driving assist, which is the closest this car gets to offering some level of semi-autonomous driving. Enjoy combustion Maseratis while you can. The brand has already said it will build its last fossil fueled model just before 2030, which is why there's a full EV version of this car, which we'll get to in a moment. For the time being though, that's going to be a rare sight on European roads. After all, you don't think about buying a Maserati luxury SUV and then worry too much about the cost of running it. Maserati hopes that those who might will be mollified by its fitment of a 48 volt mild hybrid electrified system to the four cylinder two litre models. As usual with mild hybrid tech, this doesn't make an awful lot of efficiency difference as you'll discover if you compare the returns of a four cylinder Gricale with those of the equivalent Alfa Romeo Stelvio which uses an unelectrified version of the same engine. The 48 volt system works as these kinds of setups usually do with a belt starter generator, a tiny 48 volt battery, an e-booster and an AC DC converter. Nip out and put the kettle on if you don't want the technical fine details of how all this works. But for those that do, we'll tell you that the belt starter generator acts as an alternator charging the boot mounted battery which in turn powers the e-booster fitted to the engine. Overall, the system's job is to recoup some of the energy normally lost during braking or coasting, using it to assist the engine under load and to power the car's start-stop system and some of its electric auxiliaries. As part of the vehicle section of the center stack screen, there's a My Car section with an e-hybrid screen that can show you the 48 volt system working in real time. 
As for the four-cylinder models WLTP figures, well, they're a bit better than you'd get from a rival two-litre Porsche Macan, which presumably is what Maserati was aiming at. For the base two-litre GT version we're trying here, the Italian brand quotes a combined cycle fuel figure of between 30.7 and 32.4 mpg and a 198 grams per kilometer of CO2 figure. The 2-litre Modena model is WLTP rated at up to 32.1 mpg and 199 grams per kilometer. The top V6 Trofeo variant doesn't get the mild hybrid tech but does feature cylinder deactivation so that at mid to low throttle speeds only half of the cylinders will be used. It doesn't help much. The Trofeo is rated at 25.2 mpg and 254 grams per kilometer. The figures I've just quoted assume constant operation in the most frugal of the provided drive modes, comfort, and you can keep an eye on drive efficiency via a selectable display in the instrument panel or with more detail by viewing a graphical consumption history section of the centre screen. The same screen's My Car section can also show you your mileage to your next service appointment and perform a tyre and oil check. Now that the Levante has established Maserati as an SUV maker, the used market should be quite comfortable when the time comes to sell this Gricale, with residual values also held by the car's relative rarity. Experts suggest that after three years, your Gricale will hold on to around 55% of its original value. Mind you, that is some way off, something like a Porsche Macan, which in top GTS form can hold on up to 70% over the same period. Across the range, reliability should be fine. The 2-litre engine is a proven Alfa Romeo-derived unit, so is unlikely to cause any issues. The all-electric Gricale Folgore gets a 105 kilowatt hour battery pack, so should offer a decent driving range, but it runs on a 400 volt electrical system, so won't charge as quickly as the 800 volt system used by some segment rivals, the Kia EV6 GT, for instance. It charges at 150 kilowatts, which means you'll be able to top up from 20 to 80% in 29 minutes, or add 62 miles of range in nine minutes. Whatever Gricale you decide upon, it'll come with a three-year unlimited mileage warranty, better than Audi's three-year 60,000-mile package, but comparable to what you'd get from rivals at Porsche, BMW and Mercedes. Service intervals are every year or every 12,500 miles, whichever comes first. Fixed-price servicing packages are available, plus, because most Maserati dealers are joint franchises with Ferrari workshops, it'll feel like a bit of an event every time you take your car in for a scheduled visit. The Gricale certainly makes the performance part of the mid-sized SUV market a more interesting place. If you've already decided that you really want a rival Porsche Macan, you'll find things to criticise in this Maserati's cabin. You'll cast a few aspersions about possible build quality glitches, and you might well point out that it's not quite Porsche-like on the limit. We're not going to do that because this Maserati is aimed at a slightly different kind of customer. Someone who will love the aggressive looks, the Italian interior, and the glorious roar of the top V6. Trofero variant. All of these things make the Gricale unique in its segment. Whether this car will feel quite as appealing in all electric form is another question, but then only a few years ago we'd have questioned the concept of a four-cylinder Maserati 2, yet by the time of this Gricale model's launch that was the kind of car, the Levante Hybrid, that the company was selling most of. So Maserati has changed. It should have changed sooner, but the Gricale was worth waiting for.